It's showtime. Hello and welcome to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We're your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week, we will be discussing musicals, but specifically what they taught us. Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) I'm going to do full disclosure. We need probably about 10 minutes just to kind of talk about everything that exciting that we went on. So Ian, if you're listening, maybe skip forward like 10 minutes. Yes, Pop. I don't know if he listens anymore. No, I think, we just I think forward, he, is this is my father we're talking about. I think he listened to a couple of episodes because I gave him a hard time. I was like, well, some support you. Oh, you never listen. Um, <laughs> and then he gave us some especially feedback. Especially when he's been name checked qu- quite a bit. I'm like, well, that's just rude. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, I mean, like, you just need to get on with it. So I just thought I would do a wee public service yeah. announcement to say... You know, maybe skip ahead. We've got a lot. We've got a lot of housekeeping or ad, admin things to do first, yeah. don't we? Because yeah. it's been a very, very exciting and busy time. It's been like a wild summer. Whirlwind. Yeah. It we it is something we've been looking forward to for quite a while, and now that it's actually happened, it's really I know. very exciting. And it was so magical, and it was so lovely. So if you don't know what we're talking about, obviously we had a little London trip, and we got to meet our lovely friend Zoe, and we were in her dressing room at the Savoy Theatre, and uh, we and got then to we interview. Saw, yeah, we had a fantastic interview, which um, hopefully you've all listened to. Yeah, well, by people now. are listening all around the world. Yeah, it it is it is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Zoe was brilliant, and she was so giving mm-hmm. over time. Um, she's just so graceful and lovely, isn't mm-hmm. she? Yeah. Um, but we could have spent another two hours oh, talking definitely. to Zoe. Couldn't we? But you know, the life of of theatre, you know, very busy. It was when the um one of the wardrobe um assistants knocked on the dressing room door and we were like, Oh, sorry. I know. Yeah. I know. And uh, I did feel bad for her um uh dressing room buddy because you know we had like taken over the dressing room so she kind of wasn't allowed in for a while so we and really appreciate day, the cast like the, of Mean it Girls. It was like the cover wasn't it as well second so I'm sure cover? second cover so I'm sure she was wanting to get into that dressing room just to kind of get a bit of zen and kind of get her head around what she was about to do. Mm-hmm. She was fantastic she did a very good job. She did a very good job. Yeah so we had that and then obviously we, we got to see lovely live theatre and there's nothing better than seeing live theatre. No and I have not been to London in so long and I don't know whether or not like EP and I got to go obviously just us two. That sounded like EP and I as oh, in I like EP Northern Ireland. Uh, yeah. uh, we got to go just us two and we have not had like two nights away from the kids just us in ever. Ever. I totally ever. got it. I was like they're radiant. <laughs> Look at the smiles on their faces. And we just, and like, not because we were away from the kids, but just we were able to, like, eat what we wanted and go for walks and let's explore down here. And it was really lovely. So much so, even though we, we did go and see a musical together, I got to see two and we seen one together. He was like, let's go back and <gasps> see more musicals. Oh, so you're going to do more London trips? Yeah. Nice. No, I think we have to bring the kids this time, which is oh. okay. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never as fun with the kids. Never as fun. <laughs> oh, that's awful. They're lovely kids. Okay, they are. Um, oh, that's exciting. Have you decided when, roughly, in the in the calendar you're thinking no. of doing it? No. Like, as soon as we came home, I was like, we'll go in November. And then forgot about silly little exams that take place in true. November and that's all of very that. True. So, And have you got, like, a hit list of musicals that you want to see if you go back? Well, Back to the Future will be repeated. Amazing. I know. I okay. know. Okay. Um, and if we are going with the kids, they kind of want to see Mrs. Doubtfire. I want to see Mrs. Doubtfire too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the ones that is there at the moment that I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I would love to see it. It's l- funny on my like running playlist. It's, it's up more like there's more okay. and more of the song. So what song? And is there a song in particular? I, I don't know the name of one, but the one that Lydia sings about her parents. Okay. Sort of. Yeah. Break it up. Um, but yeah. yeah. Because we have a few friends who have seen it. Yes. And they've all kind of fronted and raved about yeah. it, haven't they? Um, I think it's just 
it's a bit like the musical we're going to talk to mm-hmm. talk about today. It's kind of just a feel good. Here, you got very loud show. there, like as if you were shouting at me. <laughs> my dear, I have spent years of learning how to pro- project my vocals. I know, but you were just like getting really, really excited and it was getting louder and louder. Was I? <laughs> yes. I don't think I was. I think <laughs> you're having wee issues there okay. in the corner. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, but I can't even remember what I was going to say. Yeah, no, like the musical we're talking about today, it it's one of those, I think Mrs. Doubtfire is the same, it's one of those musicals you go to and just have a really fun, entertaining, lighthearted evening at the theatre. Yeah. So I think that would be good. There's loads that are, uh, loads of shows that I would love to see on a return visit, but they're all like closing within the next six weeks. Oh, like what? Yeah, well, you've got... Um, Two Strangers Carry a Cake oh, Across. Yeah. Uh, it's York, closing. Yeah. And then the other one is Kath- Kathy and Stella's yes. Murder Podcast. Yeah. It's closing and I really wish I'd seen it. So there's loads of like Frozen. Never got, I never got to see But that's Frozen. okay. You'll see it in 2025 whenever it's released on Disney Plus. Oh, yes. That was announced at D23. And you remember way, way back, many centuries ago mm-hmm. on this podcast, I said that. Yes. Yeah. So clearly my, my, uh, what is it? The people Influence. who squealed about it oh, right, um, yeah. were right. What is um, that? My, my. Insider behind? knowledge. Insiders. Yeah. Um, also, I'm not sad about Frozen closing because actually there's going to be a nice period of Shakespeare in that theatre. Yes. And it's making room for. Hercules. I so I will be over in 2025 again I, for Hercules. I, I'll be there with you. Yeah. I, that is very exciting. Very. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber's funny, isn't he? Like mm. he was like, I would like to get see Shakespeare back in the Royal Theatre Jury Lane. And mm. to be fair to him, he's done it. Yeah. Is Jimmy, is that Shakespeare Jimmy Lloyd? Yeah. Uh, is attached to. Mm-hmm. Is it Romeo and Juliet or is it different? No, it's, it's different. It's a different title, it's, isn't it? Um, ah, you've put me on the spot. Sorry. Um, some big names in it too. It, yeah, we'll find it for next time. But it's coming back. It, Shakespeare yeah. is coming back to the Theatre Royal. Jury. And that's what I loved about being in London. You forget when you're in London how accessible theatre is and how you've got the option of um, seeing a play, seeing a musical, seeing something you've never heard of before. Um, yes, you know, ticket prices are still extortion. Yes. Not um, so accessible when you don't but want if to break you the didn't, bank. But if you didn't... If you weren't fussy, yeah. you could see something within your price range. Oh, the variety of what yeah. what there is. That's what I was like whenever we were leaving. I was like, oh, yeah. like there's just, yes, we are much better than what we were many, many, many years ago. But still, there's just not that variety going on where we live. Yeah, no, absolutely. But then you've only got a, you know, you've one big regional venue. Yeah. You know, and... And and two like other mm. the, theatrical venues, but I suppose if you're wanting straight plays, you can go to one of those places. If yeah, you're true. wanting musical theatre and then like you know large scale entertainment, you can go to the other. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I suppose, yeah. I mean, we'll just never be happy, will no, we? Living no. in Northern Ireland, no, no. <laughs> I think is the the yeah true, true. the butt of it. I think yeah, you just forget how magical the West End is, and that's just. It was great. But it was a lovely time. It was a lovely time. To be away. To be away. Totally fangirling though, weren't we? Like oh that day goodness. going into the Savoy and then... Getting our names written down on the visitor's stage book. Door, and then our, our wee passes, which mm-hmm. were pink. It was, was very cute. cool. Was so and good. I don't know if you noticed, we walked past the dressing room beside Zoe's. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a sign up going sleeping call back later. Or, oh, no, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, no. It oh, that's cute. Yeah. Yeah, I did like so easy makeshift bed. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny, though. I find uh, dressing rooms really interesting. That was why, you know, I asked mm-hmm. the question about, you know, what do we have here yeah. in the dressing room? Like, do you have like your essential items? Like, what do you have to have? Because it is a home away from home, isn't mm, it? Really, yes, for the sure. the length week. of whatever the contract is. Yeah, yeah. Like they'll spend an awful lot of time in in those rooms. Very true. So I'm glad she got the one with the air conditioning. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
That was great. Because London was warm and muggy when we were there, but we were wet that day, weren't we? Yeah, like, we were we wet were that day. Soggy, soggy, soggy. Yeah, it was. It wasn't the best because Caitlin had been there. My sister had been there the week before because the lovely Shamrock Tenors have been mm-hmm. playing in the Adelphi Theatre. Yes. Um, but she, um, and I'm just going to declare this in the podcast, she had sweated that much she had to go and buy new clothes because London was very I mean, warm. <laughs> to be fair, that, what, what is it with you girls and your excuses for buying new clothes because your shoes were hurting you, weren't they? So well, you went and bought new shoes? Yeah, but I had to. Is it fair, yeah? Oh, oh, I can't. I need a new wardrobe. Any excuse? I did just buy a new pair of shoes because I kept tripping the shoes that I was wearing, you know. I don't know. I just got an arm. Is like, you have a problem. You need to go and get new trainers. Our EP's actually with us today. He's, yes, he's yeah, back. He's um, back. Uh, he has something to say. Yeah. Um, I was actually glad that she bought shoes on this occasion. One of the rare times because, as Lauren just said, she was wearing, were they cheap shoes that you got? Fuck, probably. You yeah. know. I kind of had forgotten I needed a good pair of walking shoes for London. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and she got these ones and the soles were just a wee bit thicker, you know, for a small person it gives her a wee bit of a height advantage, small. that sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> but for whatever reason, we were walking down one street and the, fr- the floors, the crowns, quite uneven, constantly, four times within the period of about 10 minutes, she tripped and each time I was having to grab her and she's like, I'm so glad you're there. I'm so glad you're there. And I was like, let's get you some new shoes. <laughs> oh, just, so it was your idea actually yeah, this time around? Yeah, it was on yeah. this occasion. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it worked out. Fair enough. Use her a hit. <laughs> Kayla needing a new outfit a week later. Lauren needing a new pair of shoes. That being said, Tim, I wouldn't put a past her to uh, sacrifice her own health and well-being to get a new pair of shoes. Yeah, so, she wasn't tripping at all. I She's mean, just a good actress. I think that, that could be what it is. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Talking about tripping and falling, I was out for a run last week and proper face painted. <gasps> Did yeah, you? Yeah, proper head over heel. And you're okay? Yeah, and my left hand side took it, so my rib, my ribs were a wee bit sore for a while, okay. but no, all good. Because the first thing I thought was, you see, if I've broken both my wrists and I'm going back to work next week, this you is going to be fun. have had some time off. Though. Oh <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I didn't think of that. Anyway, we really are yes. tangenting. Yeah. Happy Bear will not be happy. No, not at all. So, what so, are we going to talk about this, this week? Fo- feel good, fun show that <laughs> I, we alluded to earlier. It's a cautionary tale. Yeah. Had to get it in somewhere, did. didn't I? You did. We're talking Mean Girls, obviously. Obviously. So we got to see it, um, which was fab. So After we thought, interviewing our friends. Yeah. Away. So we thought that really the next one that we, we should talk about was this lovely movie music. Well, yeah. you know, musical based on a movie. Yeah. We're going to kind of take the next couple of weeks to delve a wee bit deeper into the the music of theatre that we, we did sing. see and enjoyed whilst we were away. Yeah. So, Mean Girls. Mean Girls. First of all, uh-huh. what did you think in three words? <laughs> I love it. But, oh. Sorry, that was probably very loud for you there. In three words yeah. of the musical that we see. What you saw. Three words. Describe it. Pink. Feisty fun. Pink, feisty, fun. Okay. Um, camp. Uh huh. Entertaining. Plastic. Ah, oh, lovely. Very good. We yeah, go. love it. So, music with book by Tina Fey. Mm hmm. Lyrics by Neil Benjamin and music by Jeff Richmond, who Zoe was saying, Jeff Richmond is Tina Fey's husband. husband. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I'll wait until a few weeks and and talk about it, uh, like, because you'll be like, what? Our podcast links are crazy. Anyway. Oh, there's more links to what's to come? (laughs) Yeah. I was about to say, can we not just talk about this week when we're talking about the musical? Yeah, so it's a musical based on the 2004 movie of the same name, starring Lindsay Lohan, Rachel McAdams and Lizzie Kaplan. So back then they were names, but now those three are like, well. Big stars. Big, massive stars. Mm -hmm. Big, massive, massive stars. Um, And that movie was inspired by Queen Bees and Wannabes. Yeah, I didn't realise that until I researched. Oh, right, okay. See, this is the thing as well that I need to talk about. I absolutely adore the 2004 movie. Love it. Because I was about 16, 17 whenever it came out. Uh 
but you haven't seen it. Full disclosure, have no idea what anything about Mean Girls. So didn't get any of the references, yeah. didn't get any of the taglines, like completely oblivious to the, the this world of pink and plastic. I, You need to watch it. Yeah, and I think I will because the problem being yeah. my first... My first um, exploration of mm-hmm. Mean Girls was then this recent, was it Me. 2024? Was it this year? Yeah, it so came it was out. 20 years from the original film. Okay. They then. I mean, they should have just left it, to be honest. It was truly atrocious. Now, Terrible. I had listened to the Broadway cast recording mm-hmm. prior to ever seeing the movie musical. The, the remake of the movie musical. And I like, I enjoy the mm-hmm. Mean Girls soundtrack. I think that some of the songs are, are brilliant. Yeah. So I. I enjoy, I know I enjoyed the music and then I went to see the remake and the remake had put the some of the mu- music yeah. the musical mu- music yeah. into it and I was like oh that was pants like to- like the remake is pants it's awful yeah so I obviously have watched Mean Girls the movie the 2004 movie loads like yeah. I mean loads I could quote it quite a bit uh, we then seen them I did the same listen to the Broadway musical. Uh, cast recording and uh, we obviously then went to see it and then i watched the movie musical oh when did you watch the movie like musical? last week oh brilliant and you didn't send me a text no because i wanted to discuss it okay on this. cool um, right i actually turned it off halfway through <laughs> and then thought i need to be fair and i need to watch, watch and it, it didn't again. get any but better my did daughter it? did go to the cinema to yeah. see the movie musical and she's a big fan of the 2004 one so mm-hmm. she was like oh it's a bit rubbish and I was like, oh, okay, is it? Like, I just didn't know, was it just not translating well? Was the musical just not translating well on screen? Yeah. Um, But no, I think it was their direct, the way they decided to insert the songs just didn't work. And the choice yeah. of songs didn't work yeah. either Yeah. for me. That's just my unprofessional opinion. Just wasn't fussed no but which it is, then did make me like worry that i wouldn't like okay. the musical yeah which is not true no i had so, a great night at the theater but i didn't realize that Faye, tina Fey had been inspired by the yes. rosalind wiseman's 2002 book yes queen bees and wannabes and tina Fey stars in both movies book. and as so we had mentioned in the interview is heavily involved mm, in still, yeah. the you know the the musical, which is great. She's so funny, yeah. so so funny. But the, what I love is, and I actually don't think I realised that until quite recently. The two thousand four movie was directed by Mark Waters, mm-hmm. who did some films which I love, like Freaky Friday, which mm-hmm. is getting a, a you know a sequel, and um, Bad Santa two. He did He's All That, which is a sequel to She's All That, which was the film that was out whenever no we were neither. younger. Um, and Spiderwick Chronicles. So I was like, actually, I really like that director and his yeah. style. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, yes, a yep. Neil Benjamin or yep. Nell Benjamin? Is it Neil? Nell. Nell. He wrote the lyrics, as you had said, and he did the lyrics for Legally Blonde. Okay. Yes. So you can see both a little pink. bit both pink and another fun fact both opened in the Savoy Theatre in London. That's right. Because I remember seeing Legally Blonde in the Savoy Theatre. Have we done Legally Blonde yet no, on this podcast? It, no. oh, it's a great show. We'll have to do it. Yeah. Um, it is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So quite similar, actually, in style and everything, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, okay. it, great. The musical focuses on Caddy or Katie. It's, I still am not sure what the main Her name is called. Katie, but Katie spelled Janice Caddy. calls her Caddy. Okay, so it's Katie C-A-D-Y. Heron, a teenage girl who transfers to a public high school after being homeschooled her whole life in Africa. At school, she befriends outsiders Janice mm-hmm. and Damien, mm-hmm. which are the parts that we would be playing. Absolutely, yeah. Who persuade her to infiltrate the Plastics, a clique consisting of the wealthy but insecure Gretchen Wiener, sweet but dim-witted Karen, and the Queen Bee herself. My name is Regina George. Perfect. And apparently she's a massive deal. And I am a massive deal. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so there we go. Directed and choreographed by Casey Nicola. Yeah. And he's done a lot. 
Yeah, it's done done quite a bit and probably mm, it's good say maybe you don't know his name, but you, you should know his name. But we will know his name even more because yeah. isn't he is he not directing and choreographing Hercules? Oh yes. Did Zoe he not is. tell us that? Yes, he is, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I think I've yeah. got that fact right. No, no, that I? is hundred percent right, yeah. Okay. Um so the musical did start out in two thousand seventeen in Washington. And it then premiered in Broadway in 2018. Yeah. Um, again, receiving positive to mixed reviews from critics. Now, we talk about this a lot. Like, mm. who is a critic and what? It was power nominated for 12 Tony Awards, including Best Musical, but it, it walked away empty handed. It did didn't walk it? away. And it, the only reason it closed on Broadway was due to COVID. Yeah. Which is, an inter- which is interesting because. Would it still be there? I would say it, it might be. It's got a really young following. And to me, it has the same following as Heather's. Yes. Where it's the fans which keep it going. Well, I mean, we... Like Beetlejuice, like all of those ones that we've yeah. talked about prior, you know, I don't know if... I maybe might have, might have moved to a smaller venue or something, but yeah. I don't know whether if COVID didn't happen... It would have shut down. Yeah, so true. Soon. I mean, the night that night we were in watching Zoe, I felt old I when know. I looked around. And they also came. It wasn't that they came dressed up as the characters, but their their outfits were definitely inspired Absolutely. by the kind of fashion or the kind of look of yes. the plastics. Do you yes. know what I mean? Like it wasn't like Comic Con, no, like no. you know, outfits, but. You know, there was a nod to the, and I was just like, God, we're just, I'm, we were just surrounded by young plastics. Yeah. Uh, But in saying that, the audience, (laughs) sounds awful. Where we were sitting, they were pretty young, but also there was a mixture of people around our age and a little bit older too. So it was, it was, the majority of it were younger. Yeah. But there was still a mixed audience. Um, I know some people beside, um, you know, on our row, yeah. we're almost mouthing the words. Absolutely, like, yeah. And mouthing the dialogue as yeah. well as which... Oh, knew it inside out. Yeah, yeah. Which but I really get that yeah. intenseness from the Heather fans too. Yes. Yeah, 1000%. Yeah, so I think maybe it was it COVID and then people being on social media and really discovering yeah. it and that's why it's grown in popularity. And do you think or- like... Do you think those girls, like, so a lot of those girls in the audience wouldn't, wouldn't have been of age to have seen the original film? No. So do well, you think well it, have seen it now. Ah, like, uh, but do you, I was, what I was going to ask you was, do you think it, they're fans because of that remake, they've seen the remake this year, or they will have seen the original? They will have seen so the, the original. So the original is still one of those the, like the films original. they just pull from archives absolutely because like, someone's told them it's good absolutely okay. like the it is such a good movie it I need is to watch so, it. you do need to watch it it's so so good like i introduced it to my daughter mm. um there's some parts like it's not it's not really rude either it's one of those ones where you can kind of get away with mm. you know showing a preteen yeah. um but it's also got a really good message. And I think that's what I love about the musical is that it f- opens with a cautionary tale explaining mm. like you're going to see some things here that yeah. you're maybe you, you're not going to agree with and that you shouldn't, that should kind of jar with you a yeah. little bit yeah. um, because of the nature of it. But um, no, like, like I don't understand how you have gone through life not watching Mean Girls. It's so good and so iconic. But I think a lot of the people who've watched Mean Girls will be girls, females. Like, I don't think it's a film that necessarily loads of guys will have gone to. Now, granted, I didn't sit down and watch all the Jurassic Parks either. Maybe I'm just a bit weird. I just, yeah, okay. Aaron, why are you laughing? You've seen Mean Girls, right, Aaron? I just said maybe I'm a bit weird and you started giggling. (laughs) Explain yourself. Sorry. uh, Yes, I'll answer your question first, Lauren. Uh, (laughs) Yes. yes, I have seen Mean Girls. And you liked it? Yeah, it's it's easy watching. Yeah. yeah. Liked it so much he wanted to come and see the musicals, isn't that right, Aaron? Sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, I've just wrecked the setup because I went to... T- oh. These wires are like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my God. I hope your phone's okay. We're 
flying across the room. <laughs> this isn't good, is it? Um, Sorry. You said about Jurassic Park, that you never sat down to watch Jurassic Park. Yeah. I was just laughing at that. The Why? Because that's not a good... Like, I should have watched Jurassic Park. No, it's just... Uh, that was your measure. You know, you went from yes. Mean Girls to Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. So well, I was Jurassic kind of Park. thinking, it... like, you know, Mean Girls is like a girly movie. Jurassic Park, all the guys would have watched, right? <laughs> yeah, <Park>. like... <laughs> <laughs> lots, lots, lots. Is it? Like, that's Me not like dinosaur. Movie. I would have gone with, like, 300 gladiators or... Oh, come on. Uh, no. Um, Let's go mad the, over dinosaurs. It, Just for anybody who was wondering what that commotion <laughs> was, I decided to swap my legs. Like I had my right, my left leg crossed and I wanted to cross my, my I know. other you leg. You weren't satisfied. And my wire, I caught my wire of my microphone, which then caught the, the stand that <laughs> was recording for our YouTube videos. And the phone was attached to the top of the stand. Is the phone okay? Oh, no. Seems fine. Oh, phew. <laughs> but and then part of the mic is... The other microphone thing's gone flying. <laughs> Will it still be recording us? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I. So, so it's sorry fine. Sorry about that. See, so, I mean, it's all live. It's, it's all, all live, live and it won't be edited either. Well, no. let's be honest. No. Um, so you'll hear the crashing <laughs> sound and you'll know it was all my fault. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So you haven't seen the, the film. You need to fil- you need to watch I'll it. I'll watch the film. Okay. And as we know, then the London production began previews at the Savoy Theatre in June of this year. And it opened on the 26th of June. It did. And it's open yeah. and it's fabulous. And our friend Zoe is the best thing in it. There is. There's also a US tour which started in 2019 and it's still going on. Wowzer. I know. I mean, like literally, Mean <clears throat> Girls will also, when it finishes in town, go on UK tours. Yes. Across the place and yeah. will be very successful. I think so. Have I broken that mic, Aaron? Oh, okay. Okay, good. So sorry about the commotion. Shall we look Did at Did you know, the... sorry, that it was actually meant to open in 2021, but because of the whole COVID thing? Yes, I did know that. But So I... was it cast and everything, or no, was it just they had I think it was just, it? I think the producers had that, that date or that time scale in ah. the calendar for opening a London production of it. Okay. But it, I don't think it had gone down the route of casting or okay. anything like that, people okay. being seen for it. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> the, um other thing I want to talk about, the West End one, there was a real buzz around it. Do you remember whenever it was first announced and mm-hmm. everything? And that was a lot to do with like TikTok and social media and yeah. young people like wanting it and loving the cast yeah. recording. And I think, yeah, I think he, it's one of those, there was quite a few musicals that opened in Broadway first. Yes. And then it took a bit of time before then it came to... Mm-hmm you know, to the West End. And I think it was it was in that batch of musicals where it had been across the water for so long, it's okay, Aaron, I'm not going to move anymore <laughs> with the wires. I'll just stay here. If I get a crump, no, I'll just cry. It. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, you know, I think Mean Girls, like people wanted yes. it to come across the ocean. Same with Newsy, same with Mrs. Doubtfire, same yeah. with Moulin Rouge. You know, yeah. like there were lots of musicals that kind of opened across the water but like British audiences were really chomping yeah, uh, at the bit to, you know for a London production yeah. of it so yeah okay good what things about, are worth waiting for right they are what about your musical Eric Lingos? did well, you have many it is a cautionary tale the first number and you've kind of mentioned it um, a wee bit so the first line is a ca- it's a cautionary tale of fear and lust and pride based my, on actual Revent what? Should be the other That's way your line, I sorry. Based on actual events where people died. So like the no beginning one of died. M- <laughs> No one died. Uh, <laughs> like the beginning of like many horror movies, it kind of gives that states that warning mm-hmm. that it's based you know, it's based on a true story. Yeah. Uh, no one actually dies in Mean Girls. It uh, it also could be, however, you've mentioned Heathers. Mm-hmm. It could be a bit of a nod to Heathers mm-hmm. though. Which as you said, they're kind of contemporary to each other, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Um where somebody does die in yeah. Heathers. But also a fun fact, um Barrett Wilbert Weed who was the original Broadway Janice. Right, yeah. She was also uh, the main Heathers oh, in... okay. 
Heather and Chandler, is it? Or what, I'm the, the, not... the one that becomes a Heather, who's that? Oh, right. Um, no, I'm not cool with all yeah. their names yet. But she was, she was, she was in the Broadway Heathers as well, and uh, she was then the Broadway Janice, okay. and I thought that's kind of cool. Um, songwriter Nell Benjamin and Jeff Richmond commented on the song, and they had said that the thing that changes most throughout the writing process of a musical is the opening. Oh, okay. Uh, because they're creating the context and expectations for the rest of the night. Mm. And they said that ultimately they thought it was important to open Mean Girls with a word of warning so that the audience knew to be wary of certain behaviours from yes. their lead characters. Yes. Uh, and they said the first thing that you hear is the overture that, that and the over yeah. like it opens <laughs> <laughs> it opens really dramatically with that over dramatic rock rift that actually comes from Regina George's Act Two number, World Burn. And cleverly throughout the show, it's often used as a musical strain when something brutal's about yeah. to happen. And yeah. I'm like, that's really clever. Yeah. But yeah, so that kind of whole opening cautionary tale thing I thought that was very clever Mm -hmm. no I love that song and we've spoke about it before like they are our roles like if we were yeah 30 years younger did it come (laughs) up in our episode in in season one when we were talking about our duos yeah that did come up didn't it like because that's what I said that that was ours and then you were like okay nothing beats it that's our our two roles that is us (laughs) like that episode of of season one seems so long ago Lauren like I'm going did we talk about am I dreaming that but we did yeah what about you what were what did you learn from the musical yeah I also I think going to see um the West End first it's uh, important to note that they're two very different versions the Broadway and the West End completely as I well, have issues but we'll maybe talk about it at the as end as well as um, the movie musical mm. so um, there's no Mr. Heron so they're in the film there is yes. um, um, Caddy's mum and or Katie's mom. see I always say Caddy because I am Janice Ain. anyway <laughs> um, she has mum and dad out in, in Kenya um, and he is in the Broadway version, but he is not in the West End version. They just version. leave it to our Zoe. They do. They do. Which is her first character of three, might I add. And in that, they go to Chicago, but it's not Chicago in the West End. She takes up like a post somewhere else. Yeah. Um, Which I thought was interesting that they... Um, changed so the there location. is slight differences interestingly in the obviously the broadway cast recording mr heron says binti we've lost our funding and mm. we're gonna have to go back to the u.s and binti b-i-n-t-i translates to daughter in both swahili and ma malay ah yeah well it's um mrs heron comes out and says, um, oh, I think I should take on that that uh, lecturing role. Mm. Um, so we are going to go to um, yeah. uh, go to America. Um, yeah, so I just wonder. So in Roars, it roars, which is the first song that um, Katie sings. Um, and she says, so she starts off whenever they're in Kenya and then she it sort of like time travels then to uh, whenever she's in school and she's finding it difficult because she's only ever been homeschooled yeah so she mentions they have codes and social signifiers um so social signifiers then are the presence or absence of painted lines on the streets such ah, as your zebra crossing your pelican yeah. crossing and all those and also the fact that buses need to follow those lines so it's again a little bit of a hint to what's hint to come to what's to come yeah um because, yeah, I suppose something like that would be really weird if you and me yeah. grown up. And if anybody like me hasn't watched the film, one of the main characters does get hit by a bus, mm-hmm. but doesn't die. Hence the nobody dies. Yes. Um, uh, Katie's a bit harsh and it roars though. She's full of stere- like American stereotypes. Yeah. So she says, maybe I can meet an obese person. Yeah. Playing on that American stereotype. Yeah. And then some of the other stereotypes she mentions is like high school and skateboard and rapping and Starbucks venti chai. Apparently yeah. they're all highly Americanized things. Yeah. yeah. What is a venti? Oh, venti is the size, isn't yeah. it? So chai, chai is that like that spicy, is yeah. it the spicy like latte thing? Mm, yeah. 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 Not a fan. No, not like it. Not for me. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Venti Americano with milk. Oh, Thank you. very boring. Oh, I'm so boring. It's <laughs> ridiculous. 
I don't really love Starbucks. I also so. have an issue because I stop off at Starbucks. We're going down another tangent here. I stop at Starbucks drive through every morning on my oh. way to work. I need to get out of that ha- that habit this year. It must like, be that's costing real- you a fortune. Well, I've got the app, you see, so I do get a wee, lots of wee rewards, like for like do freebies you? and stuff, I. Do you, or is that just clever PR and you think you're getting rewards? Well, I mean, you get a free coffee every so often. So how, that, after how many? And I can get a free coffee on my, on my birthday and I get... Ex- uh, am, I, am I a walking <laughs> advertisement for Starbucks here? Uh, mm. Show me the money, Starbucks. <laughs> uh, I get free free shots and free syrups. <laughs> Lovely. I never take a syrup. I was going to say. <laughs> and it's strong enough, so oh, I don't need an okay. extra shot. So Yeah, I know. I'm throwing money down the drain. <laughs> All right, let's move on. But it's nicer than having to make your own coffee, isn't it, in the morning? Okay. I'm not a morning person. Okay. All right, then. Have we done Shrek? No. That's a morning person? Yeah. Morning. Have I'm going to see that Shrek? this week. So am I. When are you going? Friday. Oh, my God. I'm going Friday too. Hi, oh, yeah, I'm taking the children. And then we've got Wicked on the Sunday. So it's another. Wicked. Is that Dublin? Mm-hmm. Oh, here, Aaron nodded in approval there. Did you like that wee, <laughs> that wee, <laughs> wee kid? Oh, here, there we go. We're going to see something again together. Oh, I'm raging. You're going to Dublin to see Wicked. Oh, I thought you said you're raging that I'm going to see <laughs> yes, I'm also rage, raging at that too. Uh, okay, so that was Eight Roars. Have you got anything yeah. else in Eight Roars? One of my favourite songs. Yeah. Actually, what am I saying? One of my favourite. It is my favourite yeah. song in the whole musical. Where do you belong? Yeah. Which is where Damien and Janice are basically kind of trying to say to Katie, don't sit with them. Or like basically introducing all of those cliques that you get yeah. in um, American high schools. The jocks, the band gigs, yeah. the math- mathematicians, all of that. And they're like, don't sit with them or they'll you'll get this kind of name. Don't sit with them or you get this kind of name. And then at the end, he obviously introduces the plastics and he's like, don't look at them. Yeah, but in the movie, Mm -hmm. this is a whole big thing. There's Janice has like drawn out the, where everybody sits and then it's like cinema. What's that word? Like creatively. It's really cool. The way, (laughs) um, it like zooms out and then you like see the people in real life so it's it's always an uh, a part of the movie which i love it's okay. like the bank geeks in here but you know and talk yeah. about it so yeah th- that's why i think that song had to be who big. knew bank geeks were so sexually active oh my gosh I is that a, a thing lot. like well you were in the band be. well I, 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 let me tell you None of that went on when I was in the band. I'm mean. Is that not like a running trope in American movies? Yeah. Where, you know, like this one time in band camp. And then yeah, yeah well, I mean, I have seen those movies. I think you know more because you were part of the band. I'm and you telling just, you now. You just don't want to tell <laughs> any secrets. <laughs> it's a wee have, band. I have packed. no... Do you remember your mum? You used to like ha- have to take me to band every <laughs> Wednesday. You used to and it was the worst thing in the world I was just like I don't want to go she's like sweetheart please Natalie don't take me to bed please can I not just stay with you <laughs> honestly I, on a, if there was all that going on do you think I'd have held back on going to the band as much as I did I'd have been skipping along let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk Natalie don't worry about the lift <laughs> Try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, it t- he sing, uh, so Damien sings, My mama used to tell me, baby girl, don't ever eat lunch on the john. And just the fact that the john is the toilet. Your mom called you baby girl. Baby girl. Yeah, <laughs> I, on, he's so funny. As a character, he is brilliant. Mm-hmm. And the fella, we should really name check Tom him. Zander. Thank you so much. He was sublime, I'm going to say. He was. He was amazing. Like, I actually wanted him to have more Mm. um, stage time. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, He also sings, it takes all kind of people who need people, so find people you can bear. And that's a wee nod to, uh, he makes references throughout that number to shows Mm -hmm. or to musical theatre because he's a musical theatre kid. I think that's why I like him so much and why I see myself in him. Um, And that line about uh, all kinds of people who need people is a reference to the song People from the Musical Funny Girl, Mm -hmm. Barbara Streisand having made it famous. Yeah. 
And that's what did, yeah. did he say Fosse in that? No, he says Fosse, Fosse. in and one Cautionary of something. Tales, Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> A wee nod yeah. to Bob Fosse as well. So they mention the varsity jocks in JV jocks. And again, JV jocks, this is a, the, this is a direct line from the 2004 movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so we wouldn't really have it as much over here, you know, but definitely in America, your football teams and they're really seen as like the kings yeah. of the school, aren't they? So your varsity jocks are the athletics teams and JV jocks just means your first or seconds. Okay. So, um, and then it says, I've got two words, is what I learned. I've got two words. Oh, I had to play it on Google. In like hard to, to say it. pronunciation. Embouchure. Is that right? Embouchure. <laughs> yeah. It I've really got two helped wor- you out, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever he's talking about the band geeks and he says, I've got two words, embouchure and uh. So embouchure is the way in which a player applies their mouth to the mouthpiece of a brass or wind instrument. (laughs) On the sure. Yeah. So you must have to have a certain way. Mine mine was really good. Well, I was always told when I was playing my trumpet, never blow your cheeks out. (laughs) That's okay. What, that's lots of people think because you have to blow into a brass instrument, you just blow your cheeks out like you blow. But no, it's all about your right. The, well, there your, must be a certain way whenever you're playing a brass or wind instrument that you must put your mouth. I would. I was try really and, good. I, clearly, I made it the first trumpet. Well, I would try and do it right now, but I'm holding the microphone, and it probably Please isn't going to be great. Please don't. So you should also know the word because it says, "Or it's the mouth of a river slash valley." And you're a wee geography geek, so it must be embouchure. How do you spell it? E m b o u c h u r e. Embouchure. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I learned from there. He Where? also sings the tall, glowering wallflowers fending off skeevers. Mm-hmm. Uh, wallflowers are described to be shy people. Uh, usually yeah. girls without a partner. partner. Yes. And if you and watch Bridgerton, you should know. Do you know what? I have actually started watching Bridgerton. Have you? I've watched the first series and I'm halfway through the second. Oh. I mean, it's decent for background noise, oh. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that I'm sitting there like... You're not gripped to it. Yeah, but it's good. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but skeevers are described as being a dirty, horrible, repulsive man. Oh. Skeever. Lovely. Anyway, there we go. Great song. Though. Great song. Because there is a wee bit of a tap thing in it. And it's lovely going through all the different people. And um, oh my goodness, didn't they use those tables on wheels that brilliantly? Was fab, yeah. So they... They do have like canteen tables mm-hmm. with like the six chairs attached to mm-hmm. them, and they run wheels. And my goodness, they they flew around the stage on those tables and wheels. Like, yeah. but even whenever brilliant. they're the the individual tables, whenever they're changing the classrooms, yeah, it was cool. their class yeah. as well. Yeah, really, the good. scenery was great. Do um, you have anything from Stupid with Love? No. Okay. <clears throat> uh, when I was ten. In love again, this peace corpse guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Stupid with Love is like Katie singing about the different times where she thinks she's experienced love. Yes, because Um, she's met Aaron for the first time, Aaron Samuels. Oh, lovely Aaron. Um, And he sits in front of her of calculus. Yeah. um, Which is is something I kind of like, well... And learned it from the movie because we don't split our maths up yeah. the way we would split our science up. Yeah. Americans split their maths up, like algebra, calculus, trig, I think. Trig- trigonometry. I don't know. Um, a squared equals B squared plus C squared. Is well that done, trigonometry? Um, Is that yeah. Pythagoras theorem Pi- I just said? Uh, it's it's some sort of formula. Um, I feel clever, yeah. but okay. Aaron's looking at me like I might have said something really stupid. It's yeah, so- not all like... Oh. Cos, sine, tan, yeah, all that sort of stuff. That's, that's, that's it. Yeah. My calculator just did that for me. Oh, your scientific calculator. Yeah, okay. correct. So she's met Aaron for the first time and she's like, oh my goodness, this boy's really hot. Yeah. Okay. And then as she said, she starts singing about times where she felt she was in love when yeah. back in Kenya. Well, when she was 10, she thought she'd fallen in love with this Peace Corpse guy. And I was like, oh, Peace Corpse, that sounds interesting. It's not pronounced corpse. It's core, the Peace Corps. 
Peace Corps guy, volunteer program run by the U.S. government. Yeah. The core mission included providing technical assistance, helping people outside the U.S. to understand American culture and helping Americans to understand the cultures of other countries. Yes. Peace Corps guy. There you go. Well done. Peace Corps. What an no, idiot. It's Peace Corps. I know. All right. I'm just saying I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right. Moving Stupid on. Stupid in love. <laughs> Thanks. Rude. <laughs> Um, then we have Apex Predator. <laughs> like, Janice has the best songs. Yeah. I think. Completely. Interestingly, I struggled to, not that it matters, because not every, you know, show has to have that, that leading lady, but I did struggle to work out who, you, like, who is the, who is the lead, because they, I think they kind of build Katie is the lead because mm-hmm. I suppose it's her story, isn't yeah. it? But I think a lot of Regina's songs and her character like almost like steal that from Katie, Katie, Katie yeah. or Katie sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like this one is is one of them. Like, well, but Jana oh, sings this one. Oh so. yeah, it's about her, isn't it? It's about Regina it's about George. Regina, yeah. yeah. But it's a great song. What did you learn from it? Um, well, just the Apex Predator is top predator. Like, I know that sounds really yeah. stupid, but no just, truth. yeah. And I lo- I think the lyrics in this are so clever. So because K- Katie has come from Kenya and she understands anim- animals more than she understands teenagers. And the movie, they do this a lot where then the the um, humans turn into, like, reenact. Honestly, the choreography in that yeah. number where they all just became animalistic, Animal. yes. like, it was class because it's set in a in, well in the musical it's set in like the shopping mall mm-hmm. isn't it yeah and then all of a sudden they started moving and acting like animals and I for a moment I went what are they doing and then I went duh yeah apex predator Africa animals I get it I get yeah. it I get it yeah. and I, I loved it it was very good um so and the, it comes a couple of times it does their yeah. mo- movement becomes animalistic yeah. and I thought interesting um so the the language is is great just so that also, it's Kate, almost like you're inside Katie's mind yep. and how she's processing things because for mm. her formative years, she was with animals. So. That's what she was surrounded by. Um, and obviously, you said Apex Predator is the highest level of the food chain. But also another uh, word that they used, uh, one of the lines says, every food chain has an acme. Yes. Regina George eats steak and acme is the an- another name for the animal at the top of the food chain. Okay, because I could not find that anywhere. So I actually have our with a question mark because then I wanted to know why most animations like studios are called Acme but is that because they want to be like number one the top yeah okay don't worry Aaron it's fine I did my research it's all good (laughs) a revenge party a party that ends with lions (laughs) and Roman no no no. somebody's head on On a a spike spike that's it but the line I've picked up on is a, re- a revenge party, a party that ends with lions in a Roman arena. Mm. Uh, and that's another. Re- so there's loads of, as you said, there's loads of references or like nods to Africa mm-hmm. and animals. But the the animal, the lion. Yeah. Is referenced loads throughout yes. this, this yeah. show in loads of different songs. And here... It's another kind of reference. Uh, so in it, it roars. Mm-hmm. She references lions, and then Regina George is compared to a lioness yeah. and apex predator. But this line from Revenge Party about lions in a Roman arena. I know this because I've been to Rome and the Colosseum. Uh, here they reference the capital punishment called Domnatio ad Bestia. T.S. Very good Italian there. Thank you. I'm going to do Duolingo this year because oh, I'm going you? to go back to Italy for oh, more. Well, okay. we are going back because I've but we've picked it. Oh, um, perfect. And I, you know, I feel I need to now okay. start. This is year. This will be year three yeah. of going to Italy. I need to know the language a bit more. But in the Roman age, there were multiple kinds of execution. One reserved for some of the worst criminals, where people were sentenced to death. Uh, by killing of a wild animal, especially lions in mm-hmm. the arena. Just go watch Gladiator, folks. Yeah. Which I now have. Oh, see? 
Are you excited for the next, the, 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 is it prequel, sequel? It's a sequel. Sequel to Gladiator? No. I'm excited because you're excited. Um, Paul Mescal. Paul Mescal's in it, yeah. <laughs> fair. That's not a bad reason to be excited, to be fair. Aaron, thoughts? I, I only recently seen the trailer. I was a wee bit confused by the timeline, but uh, needless to say, I'll watch it anyway. There's a I'll trailer out? Yes. Oh, I'll have to watch it. Guess oh, what I've I'm doing when we finish times. this episode. Hurry up and finish this episode. So um, I can watch the trailer. I've watched that. And also another wee trailer for you to watch is um, Kraken. Is that right? Kraken, like With, the sea monster? Or? No, is it? No, maybe it's not that. No, it is. Is it a musical? It's my guy that I like too. Aaron, he's called Aaron too. Musical? No, it's not interested. Let's move on. We're doing a okay. podcast about Never musical stuff. <laughs> Tangent, Papa Bear. I try my best to stay on on track. So that was all the musical Erica lingo. Me too. I mean, it's a fun modern musical. There's not a huge amount of teaching in it, apart from the fact, like, if you're going to be mean, something's probably going to happen to you. Yeah. Let's not be mean to people. Janice's song, "I'd Rather Be Me." Like, I'd rather be me, I'd rather be me than be with you. Yeah, love it. Thank you. Love it. I hated how they did that in the film. Hated. Can't remember it. So she, it's the same thing where they're reading out their little, um, their little bit. See, that's a thing that you never got. You didn't get all of those, like, you go Glen Coco and she doesn't even go here. Yeah. Like, I found myself saying those lines. Yeah, the musical's like yeah, really faithful, isn't with, it? To with the original. loads yeah. and loads of those famous, famous lines. Um, but, you know, yeah, but in the movie, she's like running in and out of all the different like jocks and band club and whatever. And I was like, just sing the song, just sing the song, <laughs> be powerful and just show that you don't need anybody. I just didn't like the direction, folks. Fair enough. So anyway, there we go. What are your connections or stand innovations? <laughs> well, my cat connections are my good friend Zoe was in it. Wasn't she amazing? She was though? so good. She played the three adults. So she plays Katie's mum, Mrs. Heron, the teacher, which is the Tina Fey character. And then she plays um, Regina George's mum. Yeah. And, and she, she was, was saying bad. to us that, and we saw it for ourselves, none of, none of her consecutive scenes were of the, were as the same character. Yeah. So every time she went off stage, she had to, and it was full change, like hair, makeup, yeah. outfit, shoes. Like it was, it was crazy. And then she did do the most wow thing, didn't she, Lauren? Yeah. In act two. It was like a 10 second quick change. Yeah. So like the, the stage was like almost divided by a wall. Yeah, and on yeah. one side of the stage was, um, but it wasn't even a wall. It was almost like a chi- like a door, like a changing. Yeah. Um, do you know one of those things like in olden days? What do you call them? Like a, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it was like a door. It wasn't even a wall because a wall yeah. makes it look bigger than what it was. Yeah, and on one side she did a scene on like stage stage left, mm-hmm. and then went in behind this wall, stroke door truck thing. Mm-hmm. And 10 seconds later, she came out on the other side of the stage completely like as Regina George's, as Mrs. George, yeah. uh, pink, you know, mm-hmm. blonde way, like yeah. everything was different. And I was just like, that was 10 seconds. I know. It was how amazing. The, how the heck did and she do she that? And she explained to us after that that was only put in for the West End to make people realize that she plays all three parts. Yeah. I mean, all, all three parts were so different. Mm-hmm. That, you know, well, if you were thick, you would have gone, oh, I didn't realise that was the same person. But like, amazing. And that night that, or the next night, um, me and I were in the bar and we were um, sitting there and a, there was three Americans uh-huh. in and they had just been to see me and girls and they were like, why did the, the teacher, I'm not going to do the accent, why did the teacher not come out and or why did the mums not come out and do a boy? And they go, it has to be the same person. I'm telling you, it's the same person. So then they go on their phone and they look it up and they go, yes, it's Zoe Rainey. And Aaron goes, go over and speak to them. Because Aww. they were praising her so much. 
So I did go over and I was like, oh, yeah, I just want to confirm that is. And that's my friend. And then I, I was like, oh, we just got to interview her. Fan but it girl, was fan like, girl. So, but they were like, she was amazing. She was amazing. They were like, how did she do that quick change? Like, that was unbelievable. Yeah. She was so, so good. It was one of the wow mm-hmm. moments of, of the of the show. Yeah. Like, it really was. Another wow moment for me was Regina George's number uh, World Burn. Yes. The beginning of that was class because yeah. it was literally her on stage with a photocopier. Mm-hmm. But like the, you know, like that bar of light that yeah. goes across when you're photocopying stuff, like it it was really dark and you just saw that going on. And yeah. then it was class. It, it, it was a standout moment for me. I've, I've mentioned the Apex Predator number in the shopping mall with that mm-hmm. like movement and stuff like that. But... <sighs> My wee mate Damien stole the show. I wish you so. Yeah, you do. Because they've cut a second song. They have. They've cut two songs out of the Broadway. So mm-hmm. Fearless isn't in it. Yeah. Which I, I'm kind of okay. I, I don't yeah. feel that it, it, it's needed. But they cut his tap number. They cut Stop. Yeah. Which is absolutely hilarious. I watched it the other night on because that number's on YouTube. And it's just like... Why did they cut this? This is brilliant. And that boy, what's his name again? Tom Zander. Like, you could just tell he would have been mm-hmm. brilliant at that, at, at that. And like the wee tap number and all the rest of it. Yeah. They also do like kind of almost like a wee mega mixy mashy up kind of thing yes. after the curtain call, which I really appreciated. I thought that was a lovely way of it was. like finishing the show. And so he was explaining that that was only added after previews. Mm-hmm. So I think critics did kind of miss a little bit more of the fun, yeah. um, tappy, jazzy numbers in it. Well, it does get quite serious towards yeah. the end. And that last, like that last number is beautiful as yeah. it is. It's a bit like, well, after uh, it, being it, so it, fun. It, it, it flattens it a bit, doesn't yeah. it? Just because it's a lovely big ballady yeah, number yeah, and, and like the meaning behind it and the message behind it's very good, you know, be nice and kind and all mm. the rest of it. And you see stars, blah, de, blah, blah. But you want that upbeat like yeah. party atmosphere yeah. going out, don't you? Yeah. So that was a good addition, that, I that suppose. Was good. And then obviously the, the um, coming back in with the... Uh, what do you call the it? Mobility the mobility scooter. scooter. Damien on his mobility scooter. Hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah, so my favourite songs are Stars. Um, I do love Where Do You Belong and um, I'd Rather Be Me. I'd rather be me. I'd rather be me and be with you. You just love that character, don't I you? Do. I do. And I always loved that character um, from the film as well. But yeah, I, I just think she's great. And we did say, as we've mentioned before, we've seen the second cover and she was very good. Yeah, really good. first time on. First time on. You wouldn't have known. Nope. Nope. That's that's when you have to take your hat off to all those mm-hmm. first, those first, second, third yep. standby swings Absolutely. out there. It the business would not operate without them. Nope. nope. So yeah, it was good. It's a really fun. Rather me than good. rather them than me. If that was me being a second cover, or first cover, I'd have had my head down the bucket all afternoon. <laughs> You wouldn't have had time. You'd be in learning it. <laughs> Here. The anxiety. <laughs> no, I bet you if they said, uh, Damien, he can't go on. You'd be like, okay. Oh, no. I did say to Zoe, I didn't know. I? And she did say his first cover was off. Yeah. And I was like, it's fine. I can do it. <laughs> yeah. It's great. There's We have some friends who are getting to go and see it in the next couple of months. Oh, really? Cool. Um, It'll be interesting so, to see it here, what yeah. they think. Um. But yeah, so he's loud. I mean, it's very pink. It is very pink. Very American. But I would encourage you, if you haven't seen the 2004 movie, watch, watch it, it first. before yeah. you go and see the musical. Because I mean, that's what I love, is that they are quite authentic yes. to it. I mean, I did feel like I was being slapped in the face from start to finish. With it pink. was so pink, yeah. American, yeah. in your face. And actually, their use of screens, because obviously this is a big thing for modern musicals now yeah. is screens are used a lot I thought it was subtle enough that it worked it wasn't too much we're just yeah. we've got a screen in the background and we're just going to put something on it but they, they were so powerful 
with things like that world burnt, you know, the photocopy, yes. like it was used really cleverly. But then again, you see, that's a massive iconic moment in the movie where she does that. You're not too sure what she's put into the book. Well, you know already in the song because she goes, Regina is a fugly cow. But you don't know that she's actually put that in the book. But until... we saw that then, did we not? Did we yeah, not no, see no, no, pictures of it and on she, the screen? She, she, she scans it and then she throws the papers up yeah, in the air. Yeah, that Cool. Well, she doesn't do that in the movie musical. Yeah, she doesn't true. throw the stuff because it's all on phones. Yes. And it's like, no. Yeah. The paper in the air is iconic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'll leave it at that before <laughs> Janice here blows her top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next week, we're going to talk about the musical that you and E.P. Aaron went to see. Yeah. So I'm excited for I mean, that. I'm so excited. So make sure you come back next week. In the meantime, will you please like, subscribe and review? <laughs> that was so sweet. We've kind of given our review today yeah. of Mean Girls. Why don't you go and give your review of us, apart from the leave out the, the, the carnage Damaging equipment. that happened in the middle of the episode. <laughs> I mean, it was just swapping my legs over. I know. That's all I can say. Maybe I should have done it with more flourish and, you know. A wee tap number and a... Aye. ba Indeed. At the end. A wee well, scissor step in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, thank you. Join us next week. Review, like, share. <laughs> Bye. Bye.